Number 31. A 0.24 kilogram billiard ball that is moving at 3 meters per second strikes the bumper of a pool table and bounces straight back at 2.4 meters per second, which is 80% of its original speed. The collision lasts 0 0.015 seconds. Calculate the average force exerted on the ball by the bumper. Okay, so um, first let's try to, well, first I have a little picture here. Okay, there the uh, ball in black, it's the same ball, but the black uh, part of the problem is traveling towards the bumper and then in gold here it's traveling away. So uh, we, they told us the velocity in which it is moving away. Now remember, it's traveling to the left here, so it's, it, I really should have plugged in a negative sign there. Okay. And um, I know that the incoming velocity, or I should say, I know that the outgoing velocity is 80% of what it was initially. So can we figure out then what the initial velocity must have been? I think we can, right? We just have to create a formula for that. So if I were to think about what the formula should be, I know that this value is 80% of the initial. Okay, so let's just call this VI. So in terms of math speak, I could say something like this, that VI times, right, 80% should equal negative, well, not negative, I mean, we're gonna use the absolute value here because I, I know the answer should be positive, okay? The sign just tells you the direction, but in terms of this calculation, just use the absolute magnitudes. Otherwise, if I plug in the, the negative sign, it's gonna give me a negative answer, but we know it's not traveling to the left, it's traveling to the right, okay? So that should be equal to 2.40. Now, remember, you can multiply by percents, you just convert that to a decimal. So it's really VI times 0 0.8 is equal to 2.40, and then simply divide out the 0.8 from both sides. So the initial velocity here should be 2.4 over 0 0.8. Okay, now you can calculate that if you want. I'm just gonna leave it in fractional form for now, okay? Now, moving on, so I do know the initial, the initial velocity. I could just plug that into the calculator if I like. Now, getting back to business here, uh, find the average force exerted by the ball. So they told me a time. Right, they're giving me some velocities. I know the momentum therefore is changing. And they want me to calculate force, so I, you're gonna be using this equation up at the top right hand side. So here we have change in momentum, aka impulse, will equal the force applied to, uh, multiplied by the change in time, or the time over which that force is applied. So I can now expand these terms, right? Remember change in momentum is known as the final momentum minus the initial momentum, okay? That'll equal force multiplied by the change in time. Remember, we're trying to calculate the average force. Okay, so therefore we're gonna divide out the time from both sides. And notice how now we have the final momentum minus the initial divided by time would be equal to then the force. Okay, now I'm just gonna save us a little time. I'm gonna expand on what momentum is. Remember, momentum is equal to mv. So therefore the final momentum, this piece right here, I can rewrite as the, you know, mass, of the object multiplied by its final velocity minus the mass of the object multiplied by its initial velocity all over the change in time should be equal to then the force, okay? So this formula looks pretty good. Uh, you can even simplify it more if you like, you know, pull out the m from both terms in the numerator and here we have the final velocity minus the initial velocity all over the change in time, doesn't really matter, okay? So here is our formula. Now basically all I need to do is plug stuff in, right? We know the mass uh, of the ball, they told that to us, okay? It was 0.24 kilograms. The final velocity of the ball, we know that too. In my picture, it's pointing to the left, so therefore it's negative 2.40. The initial velocity of the ball, I know as well. I found the ratio over here. And the time, they told us, was 0 0.015. So all we have to do is plug it in. So it should be fairly straightforward now. So let's do it. So we got 0 0.240 kilograms multiplied by the final velocity, which we said was negative. So 2.40, okay, and then that will be minus then my initial velocity, which was positive, which is 2.4 over 2.4, whoops, 2.4 over 0 0.8. We're losing the decimal there. And then divide that by the time over which that um, uh, force is applied. So that time is 0 0.0150, and that will equal F. So let's just simply throw it on into the calculator and let's see what we get. So we got 2.24 times, now parenthesis, negative 2.4 minus 
2.4 divided by 0.8. Okay, close the parenthesis, and then divide that now by 0 0.015. And here we have a value of negative, negative 86.4. Negative 86.4 and newtons. Okay, so what does the negative sign tell us? Well, there's no such thing as technically a negative force in reality. It just means it's pointing to the left. Okay, now what that means in terms of my picture, and that, that should kind of, right, make sense. Okay. This is the force applied to the ball to change the ball's momentum. So notice the ball is traveling to the right, then all of a sudden it's traveling to the left. So the force that was applied to the ball had to have been pointing to the left, right, in order to change its momentum, aka its velocity, from uh, moving to the right and then moving to the left. All right, so this should make sense. Now, in terms of your answer, you know, if I just flip the problem around, meaning I had the wall here, the ball coming in this way, and then all of a sudden moving back that way, you know, your force would have been positive now. So it depends on how you frame the problem. If this is your frame, you leave your answer in terms of negative. But if your frame was the other way, the ball coming this way, and then it, uh, you know, bouncing off the wall, moving back to the right, your answer would have been, you, your answer would have come out positive, and therefore you leave it positive. So it totally depends on the, on, the, on the frame of the problem in the picture. They don't give us any guidance in the problem, so therefore I'm going to leave my answer like this, okay, because this is my picture, all right? Or you could just simply give the absolute value, you know. It depends on how, you know, it, once, I, once I have this picture, I really should be saying that my answer is negative, although you may not have gotten a negative answer because you, you know, frame the problem in a different way. Anyway, I think we can move on. So how much kinetic energy in joules is lost during the collision? All right, so this was letter A. Let's cover now letter B. So we can come up with a very simple formula. We can write something like this, that the kinetic energy lost, all right, should be equal to the initial kinetic energy minus the final kinetic energy. That should kind of make sense, right? Think about it this way. If the kinetic energy initially coming into the, you know, billiard wall here, um, or the, right, the, the bumper on the pool table, if that is larger than what leaves the wall, didn't we lose some kinetic energy along the way? Right? So this is basically the formula we need, okay? So now we can just simply expand on it. So the kinetic energy lost will be equal to one half mv squared, right? Initial minus one half mvf squared. Now you can plug in, you know, the signs here, but remember the velocities are squared. So if you plug in a negative sign, it gets, it goes bye-bye anyway. So if you forget to plug it in, you'll be fine in terms of your final answer. All right. So Let's plug in now one half, the mass. I mean, I you know what, uh, do I wanna pull them out? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I'll, I'll just write them all out. I was gonna combine them and then rewrite it, but a little too lazy here. So you could have pulled out a common term of half M from both and then reorganize it, but I'm just gonna plug it in as I see it right now. So this is 0.24, right, zero, multiplied then by the initial velocity, which we found to be over here, remember, uh, 2.4 over 0.8. 2.4 over 0, 0 0.8, that's going to be squared, minus then 1 half times then the mass again, so 0 0.24, 0, multiplied then, I'm going to leave out the 0 there just to save a little space, that's a 4, uh, times then the final velocity, which was a negative, you can plug that in if you like, negative 2.4, I know it's 0, but I'm losing, running out of space, squared. So simply just plug that on in now to the calculator. So we get 0.5 times 0.24 times parenthesis uh, 2.4 divided by 0.8 squared. Okay, great. Minus now 0.5 times 0.24 times, I'm just going to put it in as positive, uh, 2.4 squared. And look at that. We get a value of 0 0.3, uh, uh, how many sig figs? Looks like we'll have three. So 0 0.389. Okay, and that is in joules. Those are the units for kinetic energy. So that's the amount of kinetic energy that was lost. All right, so moving on to letter C. So what percent of the original energy is left? 
All right, so let us see over here. So I know I'm, I'm finding percent, but what I'm going to deal with is I'm going to deal with fractions, actually, okay? And then we'll just convert it to percent at the end. So I know that the fraction of the energy left will simply be 1 minus the fraction lost, okay? This is basically, I know my chicken scratch, my chicken scratch there. Let me rewrite it, okay? Fraction, the amount, the fraction lost, okay? So um, this would be very similar to something like this. Let's say you started with 100, you know, units of an object. You lost 20. How many are left? Obviously 80. And I asked you then, what percent is lost? Well, the percent that's lost is 20%, right? Because this is the amount that was lost in, relative, in relation to the original amount, that's 20%. But if I asked you, what's the percent that's left? Well, you're left with 80. You started with 100. So therefore, what's left is 80%, okay? So that's basically, I'm basically manipulating that framework uh, when I come up with this, okay? So one minus the fraction lost will tell us the fraction left, okay? So now, what I'm going to do is take, basically it's one, then minus the fraction lost will simply be the kinetic energy lost over the kinetic energy Initial, okay? So now just plugging in the values, we know the kinetic energy loss, we just found it, right, to be 0 0.389. And we're gonna divide that then by the initial kinetic energy, which was what we wrote over here, okay? So why don't we just, you know what, to save a little space, I'm just gonna calculate that, okay? So 0 0.5 times 0 0.24 times, uh, in parentheses, 2.4 divided by 0 0.8, and then square that, so I get 1.08. Okay, 1.08. And now, after I do now the math here, so it's 1 minus 0.389 divided by 1.08. And we get about 64%, right? So this is about 64.0%. It worked out to be point, the decimal value is 0.6398, which is about 0.64. But I know I need it in percent, so I just convert that, you know, multiply it by 100. All right. So just kind of skipping a couple steps there, but I think you guys are pretty good with those percents. So that's the answer. 64% is left because we lost about 36%. Guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, and I look forward to helping you with the next question. Have a great day.